Welcome to Bruisers, a podcast about beer, coffee, booze, and bruisers. I am your host, Rody John, and today we talk to Red Davis. We talk all about him learning from the Rhodes Wrestling Academy, training with Tessa Blanchard along with Daga, and so much more. Uh, this conversation is so fantastic. Uh, he is doing absolutely amazing things in South Texas, and uh, I can't wait to see what the future looks like for him. Uh, we get into it, but first, make sure to sign up for our newsletter. It comes out twice a week. You get even more information about our guests. You get fun facts, and you get to find out what's happening with your favorite podcast, all about beer, coffee, booze, and bruisers. So without further ado, here is Red Davis. I would like to welcome the show, Red Davis. How are you doing tonight, sir? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Really, really happy to be here. No problem. Thank you for coming on. Uh, so for everyone listening, kind of paint us a word picture. Where are you at? What's going on around you right now? Uh, right now I'm just enjoying the night at home with my dog. We're finally enjoying a, a, a day of rest after a weekend of, of booking. <laughs> so <laughs> well needed rest. Very nice. Uh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a German Shepherd. Ah, lots of energy there. A lot of energy. It's about the first time he's taken a nap since I've been home. <laughs> yeah, my dogs are actually chill right now. I think it could be because they got all shots today, so that could be. Oh, nice. What kind of dog do you have? Yeah. Uh, so I have a miniature schnauzer who is a terror sometimes, and then I have a terrier mix, and she is about 12 and uh, is super chill until she doesn't want to be. And then she will play around and, uh, you know, chase my other dog around. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go all the way back in time what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling earliest memory of professional wrestling was honestly watching um bret hart that's when nice. that's when my dad introduced me to professional wrestling uh survivor series 94 here in san antonio at the freeman coliseum were you there i was there <clears throat> Whoa! I uh, remember there. watching that as a kid. Yeah, I was there. Um, I was fascinated by the whole thing. Uh, Bret Hart was the guy who stood out the whole time. I remember he wrestled Bob Backlund that night and lost to the Cross yeah. Chicken Wing. That was the um, yeah, that was the uh, throw in the towel match where Owen was in um, Bob's corner and then Bulldog was in Bret's corner. Yeah, I remember that like uh, it was uh, yesterday, <laughs> how it yeah. ended and everything. You yeah. saw a casket match that night, too. We did, uh, Yoko and uh, and The Undertaker. Yeah, and uh, Chuck Norris was the special outside enforcer. He was. Wow. What a, how old were you at that show? I was three. Wow. Holy shit. The fact <laughs> you probably don't that remember was- much. Uh, yeah, I I don't remember much. I, you know, I've had uh, I've had to rewatch it over the years, but right, right, right. yeah, we we have pictures, uh, Polaroids from there, at my parents' house, from me at the show wearing the Bret Hart glasses and the the big wow. shirt. That yeah, that's really cool. So I mean, were you did you stick with wrestling all the way until you know you decided to get into it, or did you kind of? fall off like some people do or was it just a constant for you no it was it was i stuck with it throughout the whole you know from three to to now at 32 uh wow yeah it 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 just fascinated me because you see these guys and they're larger than life they're people that are like oh man they've got they all these muscles they wear these cool at the time when we're younger we're like oh they wear these cool costumes with different colors and they do all these cool moves that you want to do um, yeah, and then you just grow up, and you then you see people like Shawn Michaels come out, and Triple H, and Stone Cold, and you see them all doing all these cool things, and it's like, okay, cool, cool, and then you just keep going. You just want to build it, and you want to be like that. So, yeah, man, I, I've stuck with it the whole time. I, I, I don't That's think there's awesome. one time that I ever fell off professional wrestling. Yeah, same here. Like uh, you know, as somebody who grows up as a wrestling fan. 
your friends always know, like, okay, he's the wrestling person, or anybody that knows you is, like, that's the wrestling person. And, of course, like, everybody, everybody knows the Attitude Era, and then they kind of, you know, either fell off a little bit after that, or, you know, everybody knows who John Cena is, and, you know, The Undertaker's been consistent for, you know, almost 40 years, and then so... Yeah, it is funny to see if anybody did, like, kind of hop in and out when it came to pro wrestling. And um, I, I always love it when I hear people that just continued no matter what and, like, nope, that's that's what my thing is and that's what I'm going to watch. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was funny. Um, I used to – I had long hair back in the day, back in uh, yeah. probably kinder, first grade time. And I used to put my hair like Shawn Michaels when he was in DX. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would, you know, swing my hair around and chew the gum like him and, and, and around that time. And, um, I remember they made me cut my hair because it was a distraction. So I was like, okay, cool. I guess. I mean, that, that worked, but I was just trying to be the boy toy that I thought Sean was back in the day. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So when did you realize there was other wrestling out there? I realized it. Around 2004, 2005, when they were showing okay. TNA on Fox Sports. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we got it down here in Texas. <laughs> yeah, so when I got home from middle school one day, uh, we were watching Fox Sports, because my whole thing was I would come home and I'd watch uh, anything that was going on in the NBA. And then all hmm. of a sudden, TNA comes on, and then you see AJ Styles and I didn't know who AJ was and you see him do all these things. And I'm like, okay, I could stick with this. And then you see Kazari and Christopher Daniels. You see all these guys that you didn't know existed inside mm-hmm. of professional. And it just caught my eye. And I started learning about new Japan. And then I started working, learning about all these different things. And then it just clicked like, okay, there's something else past WWE that we're not, able to see just yet so So it was cool i always ask people that and my answer is always the same so this is going to come back to your training here in a minute dustin rhodes was the reason i found out there was other wrestling so i'm going to share my age by doing telling a story but it's fine um i was flipping through the channels and you know i come across uh dustin rhodes because this is right after he was in wwf and i was like what's he doing and then i you know at the time, there used to be this thing called the TV Guide. You would pull it out, you'd pull, go to the day, you'd go to the time, and you'd go to the channel, and you'd like, it'll tell you what's on. Sure enough, it was WCW, and I was like, what the hell is a WCW? So I just continued to watch, and I was like, oh, my God, there's other wrestling out here. This is awesome. But Dustin Rhodes was the reason why I found out there was other wrestling. And then, you know, obviously from there, because, of course, like you said, they had a working relationship at the time with New Japan later, and it was uh, – you know, I didn't obviously wasn't able to get New Japan, but I was able to find out that there was other wrestling out there, and I was like, "This is absolutely amazing." Yeah, yeah, and good choice too. Good choice. WCW yeah. was really good. <laughs> WCW was good. A lot of people knock WCW, but I'm like, you don't know what you were missing with WCW for a little bit. <clears throat> Well, I mean, it's funny because now we see it so much with the tribalism that comes with pro wrestling. It's like, well, you you know, I watch this and you watch that, and so we can't agree on anything. It's like, that's not how this works. Like, it's just, you could like both. You can like all. You can like a little bit of this, and you could like a little bit of that. But it is funny to, to see, like, the, uh, the, the vision that is pro wrestling. It's like, we all love pro wrestling. I don't know why you have to just kind of uh, shit on somebody else just because they like something that you don't. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I think that that's the problem with, with I say, some fans, and I quote the fans like that, <laughs> because everybody should just enjoy pro wrestling. You can yes. watch any product. You can sit here and tell me you watch Noah, and I'll tell you even better because Noah's really good. One of my trainers yeah. is it now, but it's like Noah's really good, and then you've got Dragon Gate or PWG and you've got all these other professional wrestling and people are like, well, this guy wrestles here, so I think it's better than this. It's like, no, nah, man. Just enjoy pro wrestling. Everybody has yeah. a good time. You meet different personalities and then you make sometimes you make friends that you didn't even know existed out there 
by what by being just professional wrestling fan. Yeah, exactly. And it's even it's even more fun when you recognize somebody from like somewhere we you know in your everyday life, and then they're at a pro wrestling event. You're like, you like wrestling too? And like, oh my god, you like wrestling? And so you know you can meet lifelong friends that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, so going forward, how did you decide, all right, this is something I actually, I got to try and I need to be a pro wrestler? Um, believe it or not, it took a bad breakup for me to do it. Sometimes those things are the best things to help uh, get you going. Yeah, it took a, it took a really bad breakup for me to, to get out there and do it. I got in the gym and then, uh, I hit up one of my friends who was actually, uh, indie wrestler here in, in San Antonio. And I said, Hey man, uh, do you know any schools that I can go? Money's kind of tight right now. So what can I do that I can maybe work out payments with somebody? Uh, so he recommended me to Tito Sanchez, who was a local trainer here in San Antonio. Um, and I started from there. The ring was in a backyard of a house. <laughs> it was a pretty stiff ring. You know, we got stretched, and God bless the man. He did pass, uh, I think, during COVID or prior to COVID. Um, mm. But, yeah, he was my first trainer, and he taught me, you know, the old school way of, of wrestling, um, how to work, you know, stiff but safe. But, right. yeah, and that's, no, that's, that's, how, that's how that journey started. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, so which came next? Was it uh, the Rhodes School or was it um, with uh, Tessa Blanchard? Uh, so Rhodes came right after that. So okay, in January of 2019, I slightly tore my MCL, so that put me out Ooh. for yeah about six months. There's my dog right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I slightly tore my MCL. Um, put me out about six, seven months, no surgery needed, but I was persistent to get back. So I aggravated it even more. So it put me on the show long. Yeah. <clears throat> so then I come back and then COVID hit. So I maybe had one or two matches in between that time frame prior to COVID. Um, and then I see Dustin Rhodes on Instagram promoting Rhodes Wrestling Academy. And I'm like, you know what? In my head, I'm thinking, you know what, if this professional wrestling thing is for me and I get accepted to the school, then I'll keep going. Because at the time, your knee's torn and you're just like, man, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. This sucks. It hurts. You know, all that stuff goes through your head. Um, mm -hmm. I apply, and then I get the call. As and It's funny how this played out. It was the same day that Dak Prescott broke his ankle during the Dallas Cowboy game. Ooh, That's that was a nasty one, too. Yeah, I remember the whole day. <laughs> and I get the call. It says Jacksonville, Florida. I'm like, well, I don't know anybody at that from Jacksonville. Okay. Um, answer the call, and he's like, hey, is this Renee? And I said, uh, yes. <laughs> he's like, this is Dustin Rhodes. And I'm like, somebody's ribbing me, man. I know it. So I go to my right. roommate. And he's asleep. I'm like, oh, crap, this is really Dustin Rhodes. So I get on the phone. He's like, hey, you got accepted to the Rhodes Wrestling Academy for the first inaugural class. We start January 2021. It's a 12-week course. And I was like, holy shit, this is it. Okay. <laughs> We're going back full steam. Um, so, yeah, that happened. Um, graduated in March of 21 from there. But uh, a lot of credit goes to him, too, a lot of it, because he helped me sting out a lot of these bad habits that I had when I first started wrestling, um, running the ropes better, eating better, being, uh, telling the story, as he says, painting, like painting that picture on the canvas is what he would tell us. We're the artists. We have to tell the story and we, we paint the picture for everybody. So yeah, Dustin, man, it's, you see him on TV as gold dust. And then you see him as the natural and you see all these things about Dusty and Cody and you're like, I get to train with one of the families, one of the family members. That